Good morning, everyone. And a special good morning to those of you joining us via live stream. Did you wake up this morning with Jesus on your mind? Well, guess what? You are always on his mind. So much so that he gave his life for you. You are here in this moment at this time because of his unconditional love. His love for you. His love never fails. His love never changes. His love covers all of our sins. Every illness and every circumstance that we face. Praise God for his love. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the master's name of Jesus, we bow before you this morning. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercies. Your faithfulness is why we are here this morning with another opportunity to come before you. We are grateful that nothing can separate us, separate us from your love. And Father, you are a God that makes the impossible possible. You are mighty. You are, <laughs> you are just, Father. You are sovereign and nothing compares to you. And Father, on this morning, we lift up Mercedes, Lana, Tina, Tim, Arturo, Miguel, Lib, Patricia, Ed, Mary, Lisa, Lena, Nancy, and Rosalia. And Father God, as we lift them up, oh God, we place them at your feet, oh God, because you know exactly what they're facing. And we plead the precious blood of Jesus over them, oh God. Saturate them, Father, from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet. Father, meet them where they are and bring them to where you want them to be in you. We know that one touch from you will make everything all right. You are awesome in all of your ways, Lord. And Father, we want to say a prayer of peace and comfort for Anna Latona and her family in the loss of her mother. Father, I pray that she feels your love surrounding her and her family, oh God. Holy Spirit, be our comforter. Lead and guide us into all truth. Hover over us, dwell in us, move by your spirit, God. Take over this service, we give you permission to have your way. We yield to you, and we want you to do all that you want to do. We surrender all, we thank you, Father, in advance for what you're going to do. In the beautiful name of Jesus, we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. everyone. Why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet. It's just a good day to worship God, just like every day, right? <laughs> so let's just begin to enter in and just tune our hearts towards God because he is good every day, amen? Regardless of our season, regardless of our circumstance, God is good. We just celebrate that this morning. We choose every day to say that God is good in all things. For you are the one we want to be. Jesus shine.
was first prophesied in Isaiah 61, but then in Luke chapter 4, Jesus picks up the book of the prophet Isaiah and reads this text. And he tells the congregation in the temple that day that in your hearing, this scripture is fulfilled. And so I want you to begin to think about the fulfillment side of this blessing, okay? Let me read the text to you in Isaiah 61. Beginning at verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Again, Jesus was anointed to give and bestow these blessings, to preach good tidings to the poor. You sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Now, this is the restorative blessing for the very purpose on why God created humanity. And I want you to know that. God created you as a planting. And it says that the specific planting that you represent is that you are called trees of righteousness. And you're growing out the fruit of the Lord or the fruit of the Spirit. So everything kind of comes together here in this text to understand that the blessing to release us from all of these obstacles, all of these hindrances, brings us back to the point where we can be planted by the Lord and grow out the fruit that he desires. The exchange. He gives you beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I, I want to just sing that worship uh, course a little bit longer, Nicole. And uh, the beauty for ashes part. And I, and I want you to understand that this is already fulfilled. I mean, I could break out the text from Luke chapter 4, but you can read it on your own where Jesus grabs this text and reads it. And he says, in your hearing, this scripture is fulfilled. And so we quell all the voices of deception and accusation and condemnation. And we hone in on the one true voice, the voice of the Lord, God Almighty, that declares today that it is fulfilled. And that's what we're going to hear this morning. Amen? Go ahead, Nicole.
Father, we thank you for that blessing. Jesus, we thank you that you honored your Father. And in so doing, God, you brought freedom to us. God, we rejoice in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. You can grab a seat. We're going to honor moms in just a little bit, uh, but we want to receive your offering. And uh, for those that are here and ready to give, uh, the way we do that, you can do it uh, uh, at the back doors um, on your, your way out. There's a wicker basket back there. The ushers will be there to monitor that. Uh, but you can do it digitally as well in one of three ways. You can do it by uh, downloading our app, CTNJ, at the App Store and select Give. You can text it as well, and the information's up there. Or you can go to our website at ctnj.org and select online giving. So there's one of three ways. And I want to say, and I, and I say this every week, but you guys have been so faithful in the tithe and the offering. And our ability for outreach ministry has been incredible. This past week, um, we brought a, a lot of food to the homeless, prepared meal uh, for them. And I don't know, Connie, if you wanted to share a little bit about that, but um, and, uh, and, and the week before that, there was a great donation to Cranford Care uh, for families uh, in the area right here. And so, so many things we're able to provide for those in need because of your faithfulness. And I'm just overjoyed by that. So, thank you guys. But let's pray for the blessing of the offering. Amen. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name, God, that, <laughs> that God... You give seed to the sower, and you're faithful, God. We thank you, God, that we have the privilege and the honor to take the seed of the resources of the kingdom of God and sow them in worship and obedience in the tithe and the offering. So we ask you to bless it, Lord. Cause your name to be glorified and your kingdom advanced. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Luke, come on up here. This is this big, strapping, handsome dude. God bless you, my Norwegian Viking. <laughs> he is good. Man, I just love, I love Mother's Day. I love moms. I love my mom. I love you. And, and Jesus loves you. I was just honestly, I was so burdened in my, in my uh, when we were worshiping for one particular thing, just that there may, there may be moms that are, are overwhelmed in this season and overburdened. It's such a unique time, right, that we live in right now. And, and, and Pastor Clem, can I just take a moment and pray into that real quick? So I just feel so uh, overwhelmed in my spirit. And can, can you join me in this room? And if you feel overwhelmed and you're a mom, can you just lift up your hand? And, and Jesus wants to meet us where we're at, you know? And, and I just want to say this, there's such an anointing on moms. And I don't know what it is about, about moms, that they have such a heart for their children and those around them, but God hears your prayers. He does, and you have a special anointing to, to speak into the heavens and to see things shift in your life. Don't ever doubt that. So, Father God, we receive that uh, right now over every mom in this room, over every mom uh, in this community and those that may be watching. I just pray for a, a special dispensation of grace over their lives, Lord God, that they would, they would see you, that they would hear you, and that they would really just envision you lifting all the burdens off of them and, and, and putting them right where they belong in your lap uh, because you want to take care of us, Lord God, you wanna, um, and you want to take everything from us so that we can be free to serve you, to love you, and to be everything we can be to those around us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. So, so welcome, uh, those of you who are uh, here for the first time. Is there anybody in the room uh, that is here for the first time? Could you lift up your hand real quick? Anybody at all? No? In the back, is that a hand or no? No, just the phone being lifted up. That's Natasha. <laughs> she got a new phone. Natasha! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so we're all family. Uh, if you didn't raise your hand because you're a little shy, um, you can see an usher. There's a card we'd, card we'd love you to fill out. You can uh, put it into the offering at the back of the service, at the end of the service. I have a few announce announcements for us this morning. First up, 
there's a garage sale coming up. And uh, who, who likes garage sales? I was, uh, I was on Facebook, and one of the things popped up with Pawn Stars. And someone bought a, a book for 15 cents at a garage sale, and then they sold it for $3,000. So there's always that possibility, <laughs> even at our garage sale. I don't know what they're going to have, but we'd love it if you come out just to, to hang out. We don't need anything, any more items, but just to be there, maybe to, to buy something. Um, it's uh, Saturday, May 22nd from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., and it's going to be a good time. Also, we need volunteers, and there's a couple of things coming up, guys. Uh, we're hosting a family, a free family boutique, and so we know that there was the fire down the road, right? And there's families in need. They just need things, and so we're going to actually put a bunch of stuff out on the front lawn, but we need people to help uh, with the distribution of that, and there's two shifts on Saturday, June 5th. Uh, 9 a.m. to noon and noon to 4 p.m. And you can sign up for that in the foyer at the end of the service. And we really do need volunteers. And I know, Noreen, you're kind of heading that up. If you have any more questions, you could ask her um, about that. And then also, and this is that partnership with the Family Assistance Resource Center. And also coming up, we're doing another uh, thing where we need volunteers for Operation Warm Heart. This is meal preparation. If you join me, enjoy being in the kitchen and cooking, there's three dates it's uh, May 13th, May 20th, and May 27th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And again, we just want you to sign up in the back at the end of the service. And that's in partnership with the Elizabeth Coalition to house the homeless. Um, and so that's going to be, it's going to be fun. And when we serve, guys, it, God just meets us where we're at. And he helps us have a good time. And we connect with each other. Amen. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. So also coming up, Cranford Family Care. We need snacks. So Cran Cranford Family Care is right next door to us. I think that's the right direction. And over there, thank you. I'm directionally impaired sometimes. Right over there. And uh, um, they need snacks, uh, you know, because, again, of the state of what's going on uh, around us, uh, parents are going through snacks very quickly because their kids are at home. And so we would love it if you'd bring in cookies, chips, fruit snacks, prepackaged fruit cups, etc. cetera. Uh, you can drop off donations uh, in the church lobby um, during the week. And I think we're Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday right now. Is that correct? Um, and so please do that. Uh, Sunday school coming up on May 16th. So bring your kids, first to fifth grade, in the cafe. They're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, ages five and under will be in the kids' church. Also, oh yeah, your 2021 uh, church directory, this is very exciting, is ready. <laughs> so you can go through, I know, this is the most uh, powerful announcement. Uh, you can uh, pick that up at the uh, end of the service. I know, it's very exciting. Uh, it's available for all members. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, praise God. All right. I made it. Hello. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Yay, we're here today. It's a beautiful day today for Mother's Day. What? Yes, we are here. Thank God we're here. I want to take this time um, to take, we want to pray for Nicole Farrer. If she can please come up and the ushers um, surround her. She is going out to minister in the COVID, right, um, as a nurse. She's going, and the elders to come up and pray? The elders. I said ushers? Oh, my gosh. My head said elders, and my mouth said ushers. Um, they could pray, too. We want to pray for her because she's going out into the battlefield. She's going out, and she's going to treat corona patient, uh, co coronavirus patients. And the Lord has put this on her heart, and we just want to pray that um, the Lord's going to be around her, protect her. But she is, she's on a mission. She's going in and she's taking authority over the land. She's going to be able to speak truth and life into people's souls. But we're going to keep her up in prayer as we um, go before her. So, Jen, and if you want to go up in. Um, uh, Reuben, can you um, pray for? Father God, we just thank you for the servant, Lord God. And we believe in the anointing of the living God upon her life, that it will not be, Lord, in, in, the, in the natural strength at all whatsoever, 
God, but we just pray for the supernatural anointing, God, that there will be things, God, that she will think that she just can't do, but she will. And God, I just pray a releasing of faith and believing right now for just supernatural activity, Lord God, that you would set up uh, um, appointments, God, um, set up by you, set up from heaven, set up from your throne room, God, that there would be a staging, God, that would even happen, God, angelic stagings, God, that would just take place, God. There will be moments, God, kairos moments, Lord God, where, 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 where your Holy Spirit just comes in, God, and nothing happens except your work, Lord God. And she will hear from heaven. We believe that, Lord, right now, that her spiritual ears, Lord God, would be just totally open to you, God, at the moments, God, that, 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 that you deem, God, that, that that's, that's the right moment, God, because your timing is perfect, and we're just believing for miracles in Jesus' name right now. And everyone said, amen. amen. And that's what we want to be. We want to send out. And she's going into the battlefield. So please keep Nicole up in prayer while she's away. And, and her mom and her grandma, you know, she's taken after her grandma Joan to go out into the mission field. And, you know, that's the legacy of family. You know, we train up our children and then they go. Do you want to say something, Nicole? Mm hmm And complete healing. Pray complete healing to her heart in the name of Jesus that it's going to be in rhythm and all. But God's going to protect over you. In Psalm 91, we pray over you. Amen. Thank you. What a blessing to have one of our own go out, you know. And that's what, we're going to see more and more of this. So be prepared for it. We are. Um, we want to take this time to recognize our mothers. If you could please stand. We're going to stand in our where we're sitting, you know, because of COVID. And, you know, and I just want to have anybody who's a mom to stand up because we want to be able to bless you and recognize, again, there's nothing like a mother's heart. And, you know, God has given us the privilege to be able to give, give birth to life, you know, and, and, and it's just such a... It's an awesome thing. It's a hard thing. It's a make you crazy thing. It makes you, <laughs> you know, but God gives us the strength to be our moms. So I just want to um, lay uh, play a breast blessing over each mom here today. And Lord, I first want to pray for the moms who have lost a child. Can't even imagine what is in their heart because it's never meant to be that way. But, Lord, I pray for them first that you are their comfort, you are their strength. And, Father God, I pray for each mom here to not lose heart, that our children are promised that if we train up, they will walk with you, O oh God. So I pray each mother here, you overly, abundantly bless them, fill them with your presence and your power and your strength. And, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that we could be called moms. I say that to spiritual moms. I say that to moms who, you know, adopted. But all moms who have stepped in that place, to only moms are the ones that know how to give the nurturing and, and the guidance. And there's nothing like the love of a mother, Father God. So I pray you bless each one here in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please stay standing. And um, the men are going to come and give you a small token of our love. And we want to honor the moms today. Thank you, Jesus. And I, do I have my teaching here? Okay, don't get nervous here. Where's my teaching? Okay. All right, while the gifts are being handed out, and I'm, I get to teach today to Mother's Day, Pastor Clem was like, oh, why don't you teach on Mother's Day? Okay. So here I am, and I can't find my notes. Are they here? Here they are. Okay. I'm very nervous today. Just pray for me. Okay. First, I want everyone to know that you should be getting your phone calls from your deacon. You know, once a month, you should be getting one. So if you haven't received one, please call the church office, because we are hearing such great testimony of these deacon phone calls and us, again, building family together. I want to give you an update on the well, because Sue's going to be here in two weeks, and they're going back 
Um, and um, our total so far is $9,175. Thank you so much. We are so close to reaching our $13,000 goal. So, and God's already beginning a work there. Um, Sue, you know, she was praying to the Lord and she said, Ooh, is this something we, I really should be doing? You know, because she was, you know, it's a big step to take to own land. And the, one of the girls called her from, uh, from home and said, Well, we were just told that um, our building was sold that we're meeting and we have to be out by December. So God's, God's moving. He's making, he's showing her like, yes, this is the direction we're going to move in. So God is doing something there. So please, if you have not given, it, there's a, it's unbelievable the work that's happening over there with Sue and um, Ken. And in Zambia, what did I say? Zambia, in Zambia. Or Z in Zambia. Um, the last thing is the warm heart. Please, if you can come for the meals, they were so blessed by the food we, we brought them that they're still raving about the cornbread that uh, Patty made, Franco, for them. So we're blessing 16 people down at the warm heart. Instead of them being able to come here, we're going there to bring them a meal. So if you can please help with that, that would be great because you don't know how much that blesses them. And it, God's using us even during this time. We're going to keep moving and we're going to keep going. Okay, so we could start. Um, the Lord gave me a, a word and he entitled it A Mother's Heart, and it's all about our heart. It really is for all of us. The love of a mother is one that will stand to the end. She will not give up and is desperate for the well-being of her children. She is compassionate, loving, extends mercy, and, tire and is tireless. It never ends with a mother. It's a 24-7 job. A mom creates the atmosphere of a home. She makes it a home. Moms do anything if their kids need them, and there's unconditional love. How many times have we dropped, Mom, I forgot my lunch, and we run over to the, you know, bring the lunch. I, got, I needed to be dropped off, and we drop them off, and we turn all our schedules to, to make that happen. Moms just, God built it in us to do that and to be that. And there isn't nothing like a mother's love when it comes to a child. We all, all know as mothers that we have to nurture them, but then one day we have to let them go. And that's hard, you know? And I don't care how old your child is, you know? Um, I don't care where age group they're in, you know? And I love it when my kids are all under one roof and I go, oh, they're all here safe and I know they're all good. So there's nothing like it. And it's hard because as much as we love them, there's the day where we have to say, Lord, I trust that everything I've done, that they're going to fulfill what's been spoken over their lives. So I'm going to talk about four moms that so much changed the life and the world for us. And the first one, we can go to the next slide. I'm not a good clicker person. So, and it's Hannah. So, you know, a lot of us have talked about Hannah. I want us to picture, you know, we look at the Bible and we read them, read it. We ha and we were talking about the chosen. And the chosen took it more. I ha we haven't seen it yet, and we have to watch. And I hear there's, you have to watch the chosen, and we're going to marathon that. Probably in the summer, we're going to marathon that. But it brought the aspect of everyday living. Like, people are still people, even way back then even today. And we kind of forget because we only get glimpses. They had to do everyday life like we did. And we keep forgetting that. You know, we think there's a special power to them because they're in the Bible. But there's not. They were God used simple man, us, to do the things we had to do. So I want to talk about Hannah. But I want to view it, I want us to look through it as actual me. Like, say I was going through that. Because Hannah had a desperation in her heart, and she so much wanted a child, right? Hannah is the first, um, she was the first war woman recorded in the Bible for a pr with her prayer that she prayed. You know, back then with culture, now think about, you're thinking about culture. Back then, women weren't allowed to speak. They were, you know, they 
had to submit and do all those things. So, you know, we as women today have a freedom to go where we want to go, do what we want to do. But back then, it wasn't like that. The woman was to be in the home. She was to raise the child. And that was just about it. And anything the husband said, she had to do. You know, that was really honor your, you know, when you do the vows, like honor your husband. I mean, it, like, that we should do it today. But it's a, it was a different culture. Think about it. So let's think about in a culture where if you didn't have a baby, that was a disgrace. You were shamed because it was like God is punishing you. He's not opening up your womb. So think about, you know, imagine if someone kept saying to you, you can't have a baby. You can't have a baby. How, imagine how destroyed she was year after year. So when we go um, to 1 Samuel 6 and 7, Let me see. And this is that other wife that provoked her. You, might, you know what it's like when you have people in your life that provoke you today. You're like, you want to jump, watch everybody, get them out of there. So think about there's someone every day in your life saying to you, you're no good. I have all these children and you don't. Because it says her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her room, womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. So she was attacked for who she was. All right? Think of the image that she was. And this lady's going, and, 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 and imagine you're all going up, and that other lady's kids are even running around you. And back then, I'm sure, they both took care of the kids. You know, think about it. You're living in the same house. And, and every day she sees it in front of her face, reminded every day, you have no children. You have no children. You're ashamed to your husband. What good are you? Imagine being, think about that, year after year, ongoing torment, all right? And there's people here today that might just feel that, that every day it's always put in your face, you're no good. And we know it's a lie from the enemy because he wants to keep us back from what God wants us to do. Because I want you to realize what these four moms did that changed nations, changed our lives because of what they did. And a lot of them, there's not much mention of them. You know, so as, as a significant that we might think we are, it takes every little part to go together. So in 1 Samuel 1, 10 through 11, it says, Verse 10, I need glasses here. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservants and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon her head. So she was desperate. She was broken, bitterness of soul. It was just such an anguish in her heart. And I know there's moms here and even every, all of us that go before the Lord and we're just like, oh, God, this is all I desire. This is all I want. But can you imagine if, think about what she did, though. She went to the Father because that's where God wants us to go. She poured out her heart. She told it all. It's okay to tell God everything. It's okay. I'm sure she prayed, Lord, and that what's her name is every day she's anguishing. I'm sure her, think about it. If that was you and you went before the Lord and your heart's desire has not come to pass, you're spilling your brains, you're spilling your guts out. You're saying everything. I'm tormented. She won't let go. I'm not, I want this baby. But then finally, once she pr prayed through, once she got that peace, once, and, and this is the thing that we need to think about in Hannah's prayer. She prayed her heart's desire, and she was willing to give all of it back to her, got back to the Lord. Do we think about that as our heart's desires? Do we say, Lord, if you give me my heart's desire, I'm going to dedicate and give that all back to you. That's what she did. 
you know? So it wasn't about her. It was a desire that God put in her heart that she prayed through that God used it and look what that desire did. It changed the whole way the temple was because the temple back then was, um, you know, Eli, it was defiled. You know, Eli wasn't in the center. He was sitting on the outskirts watching her, his son do evil things. Think about where the temple was. We might not be where we are today if God, if Hannah didn't pray this prayer and that she was going to dedicate a son to change. And look what, um, you know, um, look what happened because of it. When she finally got the release, Eli came up to her and blessed her. Remember? So, God, when we pray through things and we say, you know, it's praying to the end, it's being released, then God's going to give you the blessing and say, I've heard your prayer, and it's going to come to pass. Now, think about it, though. Year after year after year after year, she did not give up. She was not letting go. She relented. So if you haven't seen things change, doesn't matter, because year after year after year, God's going to remember you. And I think that's what we all need to remember today because God's not on a time schedule. He's in eternity, and his plans are right and perfect for the timing of each thing. It was the timing of, and, and I think the Lord wants us to see, she had to be born at that time, at that place, to have that child be born to change the nation of Israel because he did. So... The prayer of Hannah, which is, you know, um, I'm not going to read through all of it, but it's just her giving blessing to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I rejoice. You gave me my son. I'm giving him back to you. So she had to then, in her praise, now think about the day when it came. Now, he had to be like three or four, right, when Samuel went to the, um, after he was weaned. So back then, I think they nursed till the, like three or four. Can you imagine now bringing your little four-year-old son? First of all, what did you tell him the night before? Mommy's not going to be around anymore. You're going to go live with another man. So think about it. There wasn't that nurturing of a mother in his life, but she had the four years to pour into his life. She had the four years to say, you're going to be someone special. You're going to serve in the house of the Lord. Imagine what she was saying to him. You're going to be before the Lord, and you're going to hear him, and you're going to be in the temple. So speak those things at that age, because look what happened. She let his little hand go. Imagine, I'm bringing my four-year-old, I'm giving him, and I'm, I'm leaving him there. Okay, I got to go home now. Can you imagine what this mom felt day after day? You know, think about it. In re we don't think about that, what Hannah had to do. Her heart's desire was now given back to him, literally, literally given back to the Lord. And what did her, what did she do? She gave her blessing back to the Lord. And can we do this? Can we? Can we trust God enough? She had to trust God enough to say, he's in your hands now. And you're going to do with him what you have chosen for him to do. But look what her heart's desire did. It changed the nation. It was God-appointed time, and it had to be Hannah, to accomplish his God's work. So true in our own lives, we are here for just his purpose for just this time. Again, we have to, I, I, I feel like the Lord wants to keep reminding us of this, keep reminding us of this. It's like, why are we here today? Because there's a greater plan that we don't even know about. God brought back into the temple um, God was brought back into the temple when Samuel became priest. Think about it. Samuel anointed the first king, King David, a man after his own heart. Imagine that, King David, who we all now thankful again because he was in the lineage for our Jesus to be born. So imagine one prayer bring forth a son that anointed the king of Israel that became one of the greatest um, people that we, you know, we look to see the things, David's heart and, and how he, you know, the Psalms and everything that David did for us. But it was because of that one prayer that that mother made. So that one prayer can make such a change that changes the whole world. I want to go now to Exodus, Exodus 2, 2 through 4. And again, this is all about mother's hearts. 
she had, you know, and it seems like all these moms had to do at when their ch children were at a young age. Now, let's go to jo jo Jochebel, Moses' mother. And God showed me a different thing about what happens with her. All right. So in, jo in Exodus 2, Exodus 2, 2 through 4, well, it's, I'll read. And a man of the house of Levi went and took a wife of a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of, of bulrushes for him, dabbed it with ash, asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it at the reeds of, by the river of the banks. And his sister stood afar off to know that would be done for him. Okay, so now, first of all, that was a bad time during Israel. They were going around and killing all the babies at that point because they thought that, you know, there's this king rising up that's going to be greater than Pharaoh. Imagine now, you're hiding a baby. You are literally are taking your life. This mom took her life and her risked her life to protect that baby. And we know we would do that today. If our child wasn't, we would do anything we had to do to keep her safe. She was desperate to keep him alive. There was some, again, God put something in her heart and said, there's going to be something with this baby and you need to protect him. Again, she had to be hearing from the Lord because all the other moms were letting their kids be killed. Think about it. They were coming into the house and just letting them kill him. I never let anybody into my house to kill my baby. She took the courage to stand up to the enemy. Think, you know, we don't think about that in the natural. Can you imagine every day, it says, you know, like you hear the wailing. Moms are screaming and sobbing because their baby has just been killed. And what did Jochebel have to do? She had to keep him quiet. She had, can you imagine every time he made a peep, she's like, oh, my God, they're going to hear him. They're going to come and kill him. So think about, you know, put yourself in that place. There's death all around her. And she's saying, death is not coming to my house. I'm saving this baby, all right? So she had to do, again, the thing that had to break her heart. Now, the Lord, it doesn't, again, she had to have a relationship with the Lord because it doesn't say that the Lord spoke to her and said, put the baby in the basket, throw her in a river. Something in God told her to do that. The Lord told her, this is what I want you to do in her own time, in her own prayer time. So can you imagine, again, you're putting your baby on a river. So many things can happen on a river. And again, at such a young age, now don't forget, those three months, she was praying over him. Lord, protect her. You know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, protect my baby. I'm doing all I can to keep him alive. Puts her in the basket, floats down, and the Pharaoh's daughter picks him up and sees him. Imagine that, okay? The daughter, um, you know, um, the sister saw. The sister, again, right place, right time, went and said, oh, I know somebody who can nurse her. So again, nurse him. So again, God made provision for Jochebel that even though she let her son go, she had that time again, that three to four years, to pour into Moses. Moses, I don't know. Well, she it wasn't. She didn't. Know, well, she knew his name was Moses, right? When Sarah's daughter. I think so. Yeah, he was. You know, she's pouring into the house, and I want you to see about Jochebel that um, that was just so like the Lord revealed to me. I'm like, wow, I can't believe this. That um, the act of her heart brought forth the deliverer of the Israelites. Did she know this? No. But for three to four years, she was pouring into his heart. Now think about it. He was going to live in the house of the enemy. Okay? Think about that. We didn't think about that. He grew up in the enemy's house. But in those three to four years, Lord, I pray the prayer of Sarah. You know, I'm praying over you. You're going to be great. I pray protection over him that he doesn't take on the traditions of the Egyptians and that he doesn't become what they have become. She was pouring God's love 
into her. Again, for those three to four short years, the power. I, I can't imagine that I wouldn't be praying over my son and saying, I am actually giving you over to the enemy, but I'm going to pray God's protection over you. And when you look at, see, she only has what? We talk about Jochebel only has four scripture verses about her, just four. And she, he became the savior of the Israelites. So again, it doesn't matter. We might think we have this little part of the story, but look what that part did. Look what that part did to set a nation free. So now let's go to, because um, it doesn't matter how little you may feel, and, you might, and it doesn't matter how insignificant you think you might be doing something, because nothing's insignificant. Why? Because God worries about you when you need to find a parking spot. Do you know how many times I go to the shop, right, and the, and the Lord will say, I need to get eggs, and then I don't get them, and I get home, and I say, I should have got the eggs. Lord. I mean, he takes care of every little detail. So why wouldn't every little detail matter in what he's doing for the world? So let's go to Pharaoh's daughter. So now we're going to do um, Exodus 2, 5 through 6. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidservant walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. And this is for moms. When you have a mother's heart, as soon as she opened that basket, she fell in love with that baby. She was going to do anything she needed to do. It didn't matter that it wasn't her flesh of her flesh. She fell in love. And that's for spiritual moms and moms and dads who adopt. God puts that child in your heart, and when he's presented or she's presented before you, immediately their hearts are attached to that baby. That's what happened to, to Pharaoh's daughter. She didn't think about nothing else in her life. She loved that baby, and she was going to do whatever she did to keep that baby. Because when she opened it, she, and, she, and so when she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Now think about it. She's the daughter of Pharaoh. He has called to kill all the babies, all of them, because he thinks one of them are going to take over. She didn't care what her, he said, her father said. She's like, I'm bringing a Hebrew baby to come live in Pharaoh's house because that's how much she loved this baby. You know, she took a chance because, you know, later on she was put out because she was with the, when the Egyptian, when the Israelites left, Pharaoh, you know, the daughter went with them. But she had compassion. She had a mother's heart. Even if it was a Hebrew baby, the enemy of her people, she risked her life to bring Moses into her house. You know, and again, we're, we're not thinking the, you know, Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. We're like, oh, Moses, Moses. You know, he lived everyday life in Pharaoh's house. God let Moses be in that place because God gave him, started already to give him authority before he even began his work. Think about it. When he walked around, they bowed to Moses. He was a prince in the house of Egypt. He was given authority. People were, he probably commanded people to do things when he got old. You know, like, hey, I want milk, bring it to, you know, like, God gave him authority already in the enemy's camp. And we seem to forget that. And sometimes we seem, like, and when we release our kids, sometimes our kids are going to be hanging out in the enemy's camp. Right? And the ones that were praying to come back. Because we have to think about Moses when he was there. He knew all the ways of the Egyptians because he was raised as an Egyptian. So he was raised in those laws and those, you know, they believed in other gods. They, you know, they, he saw how the Israelites were tortured. He saw all that. He learned all that. He, um, he um, knew everything, how they worked, how they lived, what their pastimes were. He knew all the things the enemy knew what to do. We didn't know that, but God prepared him to be something greater. But don't forget the prayer of Jochebel that she prayed into Moses before he went to live there, that one day you will do something and you will serve the Lord. See, so when we have children that walk away, 
we stand on that promise that we say, train up a child in the way he will go, and in the end, he won't depart. Because when you think about what happened with Moses, he worshiped other gods. He did all their traditions and stuff. But until he had an encounter with God, that's what changed everything. So our kids, though they might grow up in the world, some of them, and they might not be here right now, they're going to have that encounter again. And that's a promise that I want us all to hold on to. They're going to have that encounter with God. And the other thing is it took both these women to answer the call for this to happen. Both women, perfect place, perfect timing when God created them to be that way. So it matters what we're called to do, and it can affect so many people's lives because look what Moses did for that. He was a deliverer of the nation. And how many years did they pray? 400 years, right? Again, took a long, long time, and there were generations who never saw it. But they kept believing that God was going to set them free. And because Moses had his mother pray into him at such a young age, at when he became older, he could have that encounter with God because God doesn't forget a mother's heart and how much they love each, how much we love them and will uh, we'll do for them. I want to do the last one is Mary, Luke 2. Time is up. Okay, we're doing good here. Oh, boy. Luke 2, 15 through 19. Okay. Now, think about Mary. She was, think about 14 to 16-year-old, given that. Can you imagine, like, our, one of our, our, our girls, 14 and 16, and say, the Lord's going to say, I'm going to use your daughter to bring forth the Savior of the world. I mean, again, we have to remember these are ordinary people doing ordinary things, you know, because God wants us to know it's an ordinary people that he uses, okay? He uses ordinary people, all right? They are no different than we are here today. And we hear the history of different people who changed, you know, when the Great Revival came and, you know, we are all part of it, and we need to keep telling us that. We need to keep telling ourselves, I am here for an extraordinary thing, to do an extraordinary thing in what is happening today, you know? So we want to do Luke, Mary, Luke 2, 15 through 19. So it was when the angels had gone away from them in heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see these things that came to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Shepherds had an encounter with angels. Can you imagine? Thousands of them, you know, glory, glory to God in the highest, you know. Imagine that. To tell them about now Mary's baby who was just born. All right, so now, these, now the shepherds had to come and say to Mary, do you know we just saw like all these angels that told us to come here? Like, we, we have to think, ordin you know, we have to think that. What do you think they must have came and told her? Oh, my God, you can't imagine what just happened. And God declared your son to us, what he was going to be. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all these things were heard and marveled at all those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. It was told to them. So, again, Jesus was the treasure that she had. And Mary treasured all the things and pondered them in her heart. Okay, that's from the NIV version. So, when we have a treasure, we keep it safe. We keep it safe and hidden in our heart. And we remember and declare the, the words that are spoken over our children, words of life. That's why we love doing the dedications, because we want to hear a word that's going to glorify God and that's going to give a purpose and a word to this child that a mom can say and take into the heart. Wow, is God going to use my child this way? Let me nurture him to be all God wants him to be. Think about that. 
she kept taking all these things in because back then she was, she took their baby. They had to flee. I mean, she didn't have, a, you know, like for two years they had to go hide in Egypt. People were chasing. They wanted to kill Jesus. Think again. Do you imagine like you leave everything? We got to go. They want to kill our son. We got to go to, an, again, back to Egypt. You know, again, back to the place that held them bondage. They brought Jesus there. Why? Because even though he was in Egypt, God set him free to come back to be the savior of the world. You know, we have to think about all the steps that are taken mean a reason. Because God was showing again that I have set you free, and now my son is going to set everyone free. You know, the first time in Egypt was to set the Israelites, but the second time he went back, it was to set us all free. Right? God will always go back to the beginning so that he can make things straight. And that's what he did with our Jesus. So remember, and we can speak life over our kids. And it's hard sometimes. And sometimes it's hard to speak life over them when they're doing the things we don't want them to do. But we need to keep reminding them how great they're going to be and what they're going to accomplish. Because our kids are our treasures before God. He has entrusted us, and we don't know what our child will be. Just like we didn't hear, none of them that were told, be, except for Mary, none of the other ones didn't know what they, their kids were going to be. They were just doing what, where they were, you know? So we don't know what God, so that's all of us. That includes all of us. You know, God, in our mom's hearts, prayed us to where we are today because of who we are and what we're going to do because it was the love of a mother's heart. She was, sent, she was raising the son of God, but did not take advantage of it. Think about it. Well, my son's going to save the world. The Lord, you know, he, the Holy Spirit came over me and gave me a Jesus. And, and you know, like she didn't. Think about it today. Can you imagine? I mean, and there's moms that do it. Look how great my son is. He's doing this and he's doing that and he's doing this. No, she was humble. And she taught, that's how what taught Jesus to be humble. They didn't elevate. I mean, Jesus was the son of God, but she didn't elevate him. You know, like sometimes we elevate ourselves to places we shouldn't be. And, and, but with this, God had Jesus grow into a house that was a humble family. That, you know, they were ordinary people. Building, you know, making, being a carpenter. You know, Jesus lived an ordinary life. Just like the rest of us, I'm sure he went out and he scraped his knee and he cried. I'm sure he wanted the toy that his brother, you know, like the kids, you know, he did the things that we did so he would experience human life like we did. So think about that. But Mary kept bringing the order back to the house, bringing the order back to the house. We are to serve our God. You know, they kept the traditions. They went to Jerusalem, did this, the, um, the Passover and all these things. She trained her son up. She trained him up, trained him up on who he was and who he should be. So she was, um, she was, and Jesus was still her son. And she cried, laughed, played with him. She still had a mother's heart, knowing that one day she would see for him to totally, she watched her son give his life for all of us. You know, imagine as a mother sitting there and seeing your son literally be tortured and whipped. She still had a mother's heart. She was the one, you know, I love the song where, you know, she, Mary kissed his cheek when he was little. She made him feel better when he was crying. She still had, you know, we don't think of the anguish that she must have felt during that time. So we never know as a mom how our children will be when they grow up, but God does. These women were ordinary women who nurtured extraordinary sons. All of us are. God has a plan for each child to do special things of their own, no matter where they go. Just as Moses grew up as an Egyptian, in the Egyptian culture, he was still set apart to accomplish God's will. He was. For such a time as this, we're in a such a time as this. God has created all of us for this season, this time, to accomplish his work. And he's going to give us the tools, the strength, and all we need to accomplish this. God knows why he created me who I am, why he created why you are who you are, and we can do all things because of that. 
not what this world is saying we are. We're not being broken down, you know, and then, because, and God drew, drew this into my mind, where there's no classes in God's kingdom, you know? We all stand together as one. So God doesn't make me any greater than you, or God doesn't make me any less than you. We're all on the same plane. And we have to realize that God is going to equip you to face what you have to face today. And that's what we have to keep saying, Lord, help me. And now more than ever, because so much, you know, there's so much anger, we have to keep going back to the Lord and saying, but no, I'm going to respond in that love. No, I'm going to do what God's kingdom wants me to do. And that's what we have to keep holding on to. Because why? Imagine us. Think about it. Are we the next generation to usher in King Jesus to come back? It looks like we're it. We could be. If, I mean, closer than it's ever been before. Things have been fulfilled out of Jesus' words that we're seeing happening right now. We should be excited. We should be excited to say, God, what greater thing that could happen than our Lord Jesus is going to come back to take us home? Realize that. So even though we're looking at it in the crazy of the world, there's a greater thing happening. And God wants to use you, and he wants to use me to do that. So imagine what we're going to do, and it takes each one of us to accomplish that. We need each other, and we keep needing to have to remember that. So how are your hearts today? Do we need to make them right? Do we need to constantly ask for forgiveness, Lord? Help me not to judge. Lord, help me to love the way you want me to love. Don't let their words, you know, Jesus, forgive them, for they know not what you do. It's something that I find we have to be doing every time you turn the TV on. You've got to say, oh, God, but God, God said this would be happening. Fulfilled prophecy in front of our eyes happening. But we know the end game. We know the end game, like the marbles thing. We know the end, and God's going to be the victor, and he's going to have the victory of this. So what happens when God drops something in your heart that he wants you to do? You know, there's things you have conversations with God, and they're like, you know, okay, they're just conversations. But when God drops it into your heart, then what do you do with it? And there's two things that happened in my life with that. God had given me something to do, a figure that he wanted me to give, and I'm like, I'm not giving that. I'm not, like, not that way. I just, like, let it go, let it go. Minding my own business, going about my business, going into the bath, you know, to clean. God always talks to me like if I'm cleaning or, you know. And he goes, uh, remember that offering I told you to give? I'm like, oh, my God. He won't let this go. And that was an easy one to do. Okay, I'll just write the check, you know. Like sometimes it isn't easier. Sometimes we could just write the check and, okay, God, we're good. We're done. But then there are things that God puts in our heart that says, well, you need to do this, but I don't want to do this. It might cause embarrassment. It might cause me to look bad. It might, you know, and God goes, but no, I want you to do this. And that was another situation. I'm like, I, I procrastinated on it for three weeks. Like, I'm not, do I can't do this. Like, every day I finally did it, and now it's been released, you know, and I'm waiting to see the reaction of where I sent this to. I haven't heard anything yet, so who knows. But when there's something in your heart, and you know it and I know it, we know it's God. And he might let us forget it or procrastinate it, but he's going to come back and say, uh, yo, remember uh, that I told you to do? And you're like, oh, my God. You know, and yet a few weeks later, uh, remember what I told you to do? Why? Because it can make a change in things that we could never imagine that's going to change. So today, more than ever, we need to be attentive to what is in our heart. Because until it comes to our heart, it's just a thought. It's just a, um, you know, it's just something in your head. But when it reaches here, then we know. Why did our lives change? Because it reached here. It doesn't matter how much knowledge is in this head. You know, do not be wise in your own opinion. Because that really means nothing. But when it comes here, that's when we got to move. 
that's when we got to take that step. And today, more than ever, God's going to keep dropping things into your heart to say, and I want you to do that next. And I want you to go to talk to that person. And I want you to be an influence there. You have greater influence than you can accomplish. Just like when Moses, he had influence just because he grew up in the, in the palace. So when he came in to see Pharaoh, they were bowing to him. Don't forget, he was the prince of each. You know, he was a prince. He had the authority walking back into that house. And that's what God wants us to remember. We have the authority because God has given it to us. So we have to take what's in our heart because you could be that missing piece that God needs to then have the explosion come to this world. So we need to take everything seriously today, now more than ever. Now is not the time to be on the fence. We can't be on the fence because we don't know what could tomorrow could bring. We don't know if tomorrow we could be doing this. We don't know, but we have to be prepared, and we still have to be a family. That's why we have deacons, because now we could sound the alarms through us calling everybody up. We don't need to be all here to hear it. We could just say, elders, call the deacons. Deacons, call your people. Army's ready to go. Meet here. Do this. We're going to show up there. We're going to let our voices, because it's time for the church's voices to be heard. It's time. We can't sit back anymore. We can't. We are not going to let go of the freedoms that God has given us. We are going to worship our God by what the word of God says. Nothing else, nothing overrules the word of God. And that's what we have to start standing up for. And it's not because we're doing it because of hate, because we love everyone. It's just like anybody else who hasn't found the Lord yet. We love them where they're at. God took us where we're at. Our lives were a mess. He didn't say you need to be perfect. You need to be this before you can come into the kingdom. We came as we are. And that's all we're trying to do is to share the love of God and say, no, this is not what God's word said. We're not throwing it in their face. We're not like saying, well, eh." we're doing it in love and grace and mercy because God wants to set us free from the evil one. And right now there's a lot of evil going on. And there's a lot of distortions. And there's a lot of minds that are fogged up and can't see the truth. And we're here to set them free. We're here to bring the word of God to them. And that's what we need to remember. That's what we need to remember. So will we walk in obedience at the answer of the call? If we could have the worship team come up. Are we willing now to really say, Lord, even if I go in with fear and trembling, Even if, I mean, getting up here, I'm like, oh, God, let's just, you know, even I could never speak in front of people. The first time I was asked to pray, I would have almost passed out on the risers because I was in the choir. I would never have chosen this, never to speak. But God conditioned us, trains us, and prepares us for it. He's just not going to throw you in, but you got to wet your feet before you get wet. You got to jump in and keep walking in. Keep walking into the water of life. Keep taking that next step. Jesus is going to reach out. So are we willing to walk in the obedience at that call? And the choice is ours. God's given us a choice because he has free will. But God loves us so much. God loves us so much that we want to choose his because we'll be in his perfect will. We'll be in the center of him will be in his presence and he is our protection can we get into places that might be very uncomfortable i mean there think about it back in the days people died for the lord people gave up everything to serve god and there are people today outside of the united states that are actually mart or martyrs before the lord and we want to be prepared if someday like it's easy to say today oh yeah i'll die for jesus well yeah it's easy you know but Will we be ready if that really comes as an option? And God says, yes, because I will give you the power and the strength to walk through everything I've chosen for you to do. So if we could just stand up, and you know, again, this is a thing between you and God. This is almost like us holding our hearts out to God and saying, Lord, take my heart. Lord, help 
me to do all that you've placed in my heart. I want to be obedient. I want to walk in your calling. I want to be part of that world changer. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. You have never left me through everything I've walked through. You have been there. You have protected me. You have watched over me. You have kept me safe. So Lord, I commit all of us to your will. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we will all rise up. And again, that this place will be declared, as you said, a place of refuge, a place of, of souls, a place to be people to be made brand new, healed and restored back to their purposes of what you've called each one of us to do. Let our light shine more brighter because even as dark as it gets, our light will be the brightest, brightest shining light because of you, oh God. I bless every mother here. I pray you walk out with, um, walk with Jesus and be with them. Lord, I ask anybody right now, if you need someone to pray with you, if you don't know Jesus personally, or if you're struggling, or if you wanna give back to the Lord and say, help me, help me i'm having a hard time today and i need it charlie and reuben will be up in the front and please come and pray with them because to always remember we are here for one another you are never alone don't ever take the lie of the enemy you make one phone call to someone you know or the church and we will pray and protect you don't ever let that be something that keeps you back because the Lord loves you. So bless you today and keep you. Let the Lord's uh, light shine upon you and give you peace. And have a blessed day with your mother and the mothers here and the children because we're, we're all children and someone was our mother. So bless her even if she's in heaven. Thank God you're here because of her and because of her prayers. And walk, I'm going to say what I usually say, walk with the king and be a blessing. Amen.